As technologists, we build things. We build apps and websites, self-driving cars and burrito delivery services, meme generators, and, well, you get the point. But why are we doing this? What's the point of this technology? My name is Arman Hezerkani, and in this video, I plan to answer these questions and more. Welcome to the Developer Student Club's Solution Challenge. Here at Developer Student Clubs, the point of technology is to build solutions to local problems. So what makes a solution successful? What separates successful products used all around the world and products that fail to get any users? Simply put, successful solutions solve a well-defined problem and unsuccessful solutions don't. Let's look at an example. A lot of times people will jump right into building a project they're super excited about. They'll spend weeks and even months developing it, leading up to an incredible launch with zero users. That's not great, but for some reason, this is a time old story and it happens to students, entrepreneurs, and even large companies. Why? Most of the time, it's because they started at the wrong place. A lot of scientists, engineers, and inventors alike start by thinking of a really cool idea rather than a really tough problem which leads to all these really cool ideas with no real-world application. The key is to start by identifying a problem, then deciding how you want to apply technology to solve that problem. When building any project, the most important step is identifying a true problem, something that people truly feel. A lot of people don't spend enough time here because honestly, it's difficult and it's time-consuming. Like anything else though, the hardest part is getting started. So here are three ways I'd recommend to help begin the process. Why not just start right on your campus? Grab a pen and paper and go speak to as many students, researchers, and faculty you can find. Ask them where they spend most of their time, what they find most difficult, and what they wish they had. Over time, you'll notice some trends that you can use to define shared problems right on your campus. David Assem and his developer student club in Ghana used this approach to develop a VR application for first-year students on their campus. You can also approach local businesses or NGOs. You can choose one business or organization and solve a problem specific to them, or you can choose to identify and solve a shared problem for a group of these organizations. Either way, it begins with a conversation. You can send emails or make calls, but it's often best to just go and knock on some doors. Grab that same pen and paper, hop on a bike, and ride over to these local organizations to ask them how you can help. You can also identify problems at the community level. These are problems that your community shares as a whole. One developer student club in Jakarta was in a community that suffered from floods every year, causing damage to homes and lives. They realized that if people had more time to react to the crisis, a lot of damage could be avoided. The team learned all of this by speaking to members of their community and learning about their pains. Eventually, this led to them creating an app that allowed users of a community to alert each other of oncoming floods, saving infrastructure, money, and lives. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, but these three methods have one thing in common. They all start with a conversation with a student, an organization, or any other member of your community. If you speak to enough people, you'll feel the friction in their lives and once you do, you can identify their problems. Once you've done this, you're on your way to building a great solution that'll touch lives right in your community. 